pray I speak to you this morning in the name of the Holy Trinity, uh, the Father, and uh, the Son, and uh, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm sure you've all been uh, in the situation that I found myself in a couple of weeks ago. I was at an um, event, and it was like a charity event, and there was a dinner afterwards, and I had to go sit at a table. And I got over to the table, and there were about eight or ten people there sitting in the circle, and I didn't know anybody, right? So we've all been there, wedding or whatever it is, and you get over there, and you go through that uh, that uh, awkward moment, you know, when you're kind of standing there, and you're, I don't know, my brain works weird, though. My, bra my brain's going, and if I sit there, I guess next to them, I don't know them, but I think I know them. What am I going to say? So I'm going through all this, but it's just that awkward moment, right? In the first part, though, I always find the first couple of seconds, so as soon as you get into that space, it's okay, because you get to give them your, your normal pat question, or, or word, you can just say, hi, I'm wrong. That part's easy. <laughs> it's the after that, that sometimes is difficult. We're not too sure what to say. Um, do you ask where they work? Do you ask where they come from? How do you know the person? Da, 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 da. Um, but anyway, I always find that kind of a difficult situation to be in. But then afterwards, of course, being the reflective dude that I am, I sit around myself and I go, why is that so difficult? Why is that so difficult? And I think the answer is because all of us, especially in our culture today, in North America, we are very much conditioned to see ourselves as separate from everyone else. We really, really are in many, many ways. There's always these invisible walls that go up when we meet someone new or introduced to someone that we don't know, that is new to us. And I reflect on that today in light of what we're doing in our liturgy today, because I really love the Celtic liturgy, the Celtic prayer, Celtic spirituality in many ways, shapes, and forms. It's not something that we do a lot here in the Anglican Church other than kind of these separate services that we do once in a while. But it's an interesting thing to reflect on when we're worshiping today, and I hope that we can all do that. Because today we're celebrating the Holy Eucharist, as we always do, week after week. But as you notice by now, the language and the prayers that we're using today sound a bit different. They're new to many of us. And the Celtic way of worship, while always focused on God as central to everything, does one thing. It accentuates the closeness of God with creation. That's very much a key theme of everything that we're going to hear and share today in our worship. Specifically, the, sport, the four elements of fire and water and earth and air. And this whole connectedness comes from the Celtic people's way of understanding who they are. Who they are. Now, if you were to picture a group of Celtic Christians sitting around a table introducing themselves, like I was doing a couple of weeks ago, the question is never, who are you? Just to get a name or or, or backgrounds if they needed to know that. The, the question is always around, who do you belong to? That's really where it comes from. In other words, what or who are you connected to? It was important to know someone in light of their kin, in light of which community they were a part of, and on a spiritual level, how they were connected with God. You see, it was always more than just a name. It was not a separate person they were talking to. It was one that was automatically connected to some of them in some way. And they needed to find out how and what that connection was. For me, I wasn't interested, or I wasn't meeting Ian sitting next to me at dinner and thinking, I wonder who his kin is. I wonder who his community is. I wonder how he sees himself connected to God and creation of the world. I was just thinking, that's Ian. An individual, a separate being from me and everyone else. This idea of our connectedness to God, creation, and to each other is very much deeply rooted in Holy Scripture. And it is something that in our culture we sometimes forget. We all know the story of creation from Genesis. But we know from the very beginning of the story of God and God's people in Genesis that they were all connected. And we see the connectedness of those first human beings, man and woman, created from God and through God, who shared their creation with each other. 
They belong to the earth. They belong to the water, the wildlife, the vegetation, and the garden. They were reliant on it to sustain them, as much as it was reliant on them to keep it healthy. They were so connected to God that we hear in Genesis that the Lord God walked in the garden with them in the evening breeze. In that oneness with everything, they could use that for their own wholeness. But they decided to go out on their own. They decided to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And there it was that human desire to be independent, that human longing to exercise their own will, to make decisions on being autonomous, that disconnects them and casts them out of the place that we know of as paradise. That's the story of how it all began. God's intention to create, to connect, to bring all together into one and into wholeness. Yet the human beings need to separate from it, takes them away from paradise. You can make the case that the rest of the Bible is just about God doing what God can do to get them back, to bring them home again. Heaven is return. Heaven is coming home, of living in God's house so intimately connected to God and God's creation. We hear Jesus before his death saying that in his father, Father's house are many rooms, and that he would go to prepare a place for them, for those who would follow. Heaven is restoration, homecoming, a return to the nest. When we ask the question of, who am I, or who are we? One thing we know is this, that you and I are a long way from home, a long way from paradise. We treat the earth as enemy territory to be ravaged and abused. In our postmodern society, we have lost a sense of connectedness to clan, to kin, where computers and television screens increase our isolation from others. Social and service organizations we know, and of course churches are losing members as we become more disconnected from one another. A sense of alienation from society, a lack of a sense of responsibility for everything other than ourselves, leads to increased fear and bigotry and violent behavior when we see others separate from us, somehow disconnected and off far away. But we gather today as church. And I believe very strongly that the church has a role to fulfill in reversing this trend. And it does so by adopting that Celtic sense of belonging and connectedness that we celebrate today. Oftentimes I've heard people wonder why we do certain dinners or discussion groups or social activities and music and arts. What do they have to do with the worship of God? Well, God calls us into family, into relationship, into a sense of belonging to each other. We do many things here at St. James and many of our sister parishes throughout our deanery do many different things. And not everything appeals to everyone. But each activity, each opportunity, for some part of the church to come together binds us together as a whole. We need to see that. We need to celebrate that. That is our role in reversing a trend that is taking us so far away from God. We have a difficult time even thinking or wondering how we're ever going to get back. We need to celebrate this because, as the prophet Isaiah said in our first reading this morning, God has formed God's people so that we can declare his praise. You and I are formed in the image of God, and before anything else, we are to reflect God's image into God's creation. The question so often asked in our culture today is, how is the church relevant in our community? To answer that question is to recall who we are created to be from day one. God's people brought together by our connection to Jesus Christ, so that the image of God can be reflected into the world. 
We reflect that image through love, through reconciliation, unconditional giving, but most of all, the church reflects that image when it gathers, when it comes together in various ways and announces in that gathering to the world that we are one. God's people are one. God wants us whole. My hope today is that as we share in this Celtic worship and its new and strange language, we will see and hear the beauty of this liturgy in the words and images of how God is connected to God's creation, how we are connected to God, God our Father who calls us into being, God the Son who is connected to our human journey with all of its joys and all of its suffering, God the Holy Spirit which breathes new life into us and refreshes the world. See, the Lord says, I am about to do a new thing. The greatest thing we can do here in our parish is to cultivate that sense of belonging and the realization that we are of the same spirit and children of the same God, gathered under the wings of Christ, given a glimpse of the new kingdom to come into this world, a kingdom where we see and live as God's family, here on earth as it is in heaven. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 